While India is the G20 chair of 2023, Japan is chairing the G7. Interestingly, both Asian nations can be a potent team for strengthening multilateral cooperation. And Japan's former defense minister, Yasuhide Nakayama, joins me in a CNN News 18 exclusive interview to explain the challenges for India and Japan as the chairs of G20 and G7. Let's listen in. Mr. Yasuhide Nakayama, welcome to CNN News 18. Uh, as the former State Minister of Defense and Foreign Affairs in Japan, your inputs are extremely significant. Considering it's a crucial year for Asia, India is leading the G20, Japan the G7. What are the key issues that the two nations can address mutually to strengthen multilateral cooperation? The question I, I had that the... Uh... First of all, Japan and India has a very mutual understanding. Uh, as a citizens uh, of Japanese, as a Japanese, I love India people. Uh, why? Especially the uh, when we end the war, World War II, the Indian judge, uh, Miss Judge Par, uh, made a great decision, and also he expressed his own opinion towards the Japan, Japan and the Japanese people. And I respect uh, that the Judge Paul uh, made a comment at that time. And uh, so uh, we have a strong understanding and uh, we love democracy. So we, the two countries, are leading the world, uh, especially G20 uh, this weekend, uh, at India, uh, by Indian country and nation and the leaders, and uh, G7 as a Japan. And uh, Modi-san uh, already came to Hiroshima and uh, he talked with uh, Prime Minister Kishida. So what the consensus of us is uh, we have to make understand uh, by the geopolitical point, especially the former Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe made a very great initiative called the FOIP, Free, Open and Indo-Pacific. And uh, this concept, is only just it's not only just only just a content, uh, concept now it's a very realistic uh, strategic uh, challenge sure. and uh, yes and uh, i think uh, now that because of the ukraine situation the russia mm -hmm. and china is now really strongly collaborating and also iranians maybe so uh, we the two country nations uh, we, we have a responsibility to let them uh, seize the fire and uh, to make a one step forward uh, to let the world uh, more peaceful. And perhaps that uh, also explains why Japan is now revisiting its pacifist policies and rethinking about it, uh, because we are living in a very polarized world. But interestingly, India and Japan are together working to try and frame a consensus document which has been facing hurdles so far due to Ukraine, something we also witnessed uh, in the communique last year in Bali. India wants the Delhi Declaration to be a consensus document and not a chair su summary. What is the difference in the challenges for Japan as the G7 chair and India as the G20 chair? You'll have to, of course, take into consideration the priorities of both the chairs, but what are the difference in terms of their challenges? Mm. I think, uh, honestly speaking, there is no difference. I think the, uh, the countries even G7 or G20, I think every country, single nation is equal. So we, we are the same and we have the same profit. And uh, what is the difference is political ideology. And uh, I think the democratic nations versus autocracy nations, uh, this is a real big problem in the beginning of the 21st century. And uh, what, is a, what is a problem is the autocracy nations are doing exactly the same uh, as a 20th century, what the Nazi doing, what the, you know, the aggressive war or that kind of uh, terrible, horrible things learned by history. But Mr. Nakayama, 
Mm. Will Japan be able to help India in arriving and bringing all the nations together to arrive upon that uh, consensus or uh, a, a Delhi declaration as India has been working towards? Because as I said, India doesn't want a chair summary. Will Japan be able to bring all those countries together upon a common mm -hmm. consensus to agree upon as far as Ukraine is concerned? Yeah, we have to do the same direction focus and uh, we have to accelerate and we have to support the India and also the Modi son. Yes, of course. As All a democratic right, Mr. nation. Mr. Nakayama, Russia and China will not be attending the G20 this year in India. In fact, the Russian ambassador to India has said that Indian presidency experiences strong pressure from some countries, which Russia think has highlighted the agenda of Ukrainization. Um, We've, of course, been witness to the alliance between Russia and China, which has strengthened over the past few years. They want to avoid legitimizing Western-dominated forums like the G20 by prioritizing their own forums like BRICS and SCO. What is the message behind Russia and China's absence at the G20? Mm, that is, uh, <laughs> I think, like uh, it's just a bad friend com community. So uh, they are like a childish. If you are an adult country, you have to attend. Uh, don't just uh, shooting with the uh, toy guns or uh, real bullets. That is a crazy thing. You, if you are an adult country, you have to get together and negotiate.'t re, Don't revive the 20th century bad memories. We have to go forward as a humani humanity. And so uh, I think uh, Russia, China, uh, bad collaboration with the democratic nation have to talk and uh, divide them to make them understanding. And uh, I hope that uh, Putin uh, have to make a, a re, uh, ha he have to step down from the clevering. Uh, otherwise, uh, the World War III is going to begin. Right. It's been observed that um, the West is more keen on prioritizing the war, whereas the priority of um, the other nations which are part of the G20, particularly the Global South, have other rel more important issues to focus on, which includes um, environmental crisis, poverty alleviation, food and energy security, even the impact mm. of digital technologies and the pandemic recovery, which is still on. Uh, considering the current deadlock regarding the Ukraine war in the joint communique, can G20 afford to let the war overshadow these issues? Yes, I hope. And also, uh, it's very important to think with uh, uh, the older nations, uh, with artificial intelligence uh, security also. And uh, also, the, you know, the economic price is really high. So... We, uh, we have to recheck the supply chain, but also the, uh, we have to make a strong strengthening uh, between those countries. And uh, of course, the G7 and the G20 have to let the, uh, those, uh, those countries too. So um, uh, I really, uh, as a Japan, one of the Japanese citizens, I think uh, this time uh, G20 uh, in summit in India, is a very, very important responsibility for your country. And uh, uh, we, the nation, uh, really would like to support and uh, yeah, with, with, this, with this environmental situation. All right. Now, the Indo-Pacific has been a key focus, uh, and it was when Japanese Prime Minister Mr. Kishida uh, visited India earlier this year, also dominated the G7 meet in May this year. How will G20 help India and Japan to further bolster defense capabilities in the Indo-Pacific? Mm. This is the most important thing, uh, because uh, India, uh, you know, you are a very good friend of the U.S., you are a very good friend of, you know, Japan. But on the other hand, you buy the, buy the armament from Russia too. So uh, from our point of view, if we can join uh, Indian-led uh, the exercise uh, with a military exercise or something like that, we can see the, how the Russians do it. And of course, they can see us too. But uh, those kind of uh, uh, the... the 
exercise or training led by the country of India is uh, is one one of the to make understanding each other. So uh, uh, you are in the middle position. The India is a mutual position. You can talk with Russia. You can talk with the US and Japan. And of course, geopolitically, we we are sandwiching the China. India is here. China is here. Japan mm. is here. Mm. So we have to, you know, the, not give the pressure, but uh, we have to make Chinese understand if the China is going crazy, we the Indian, we the Japanese, and we the Americans right. are surrounding you. And uh, especially the, we, we also focusing on the Taiwan's issue because the Taiwan is a nation. And I hope the Taiwan has to be in the United Nations. If you look at the Korea, Korea Peninsula, South Korea is a member of the United Nations. North Korea is also the United Nations member, member state. Why Taiwan is not a member state? Taiwan and uh, China have to go to the New York or Geneva and mm. talk peacefully as a member of the United Nations. So I hope the G20 summit uh, is the one of the place try to make understand about the Taiwan situation. We also, right. you know, you know, for India to completely segregate itself when it comes to uh, doing uh, business with Russia is concerned. Um, mm. You know, India's foreign minister, uh, Dr. S. J. Shankar, has always been very vocal about the fact that it's not possible, What uh, you, you, considering the fact that Russia is the country that provides cheaper energy to India, India can't afford to buy very expensive energy. Similarly, mm. the United States itself has made it very clear that it's not looking at completely decoupling with China. So can uh, these two countries be uh, you know, completely kept in isolation? And how can India and uh, the US and other uh, significant members uh, of the G20 as well as the G7 like Japan work on a common goal, which also uh, brings into consideration the needs of this global south, which, as I mentioned, uh, means poverty, which means uh, climate change, as well as the uh, impact of digital technologies, uh, environmental crisis, even um, food and energy security. Of course, your profit is not my profit. Uh, your answer is not my answer. This is, uh, this is normal. So this is a politics. We have to dialogue. We have to talk. So, you know, I, 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 I personally, I cannot understand what the Putin thinking. I don't understand what the Xi Jinping thinking. But they think their own profit always. But sometimes they have to think about your counterpart profit. So why, why? Oh, why you? Why he? Why he would like to pull the trigger first? Before you pull the trigger, why don't you talk? So uh, this is what. The, what is the difference between those? Uh, uh, how do you say the act action? Right. No, so the, I action, the action is really like a kid. You have to be an adult. So Mr. Putin, Mr. Xi Jinping, have to be an adult. Then you can understand what you are doing right now in the 21st century. Who is going to make an artificial island in South China Sea? It's a very childish. 